my handsome number one son, RJ. Number one son. Number one son. Um, and I am here because a couple videos ago I showed a spoon that RJ had made and I said that he had an Etsy shop up and this is true. The problem is, is that right now he's having a technical issue with his Etsy shop and he has had a lot of um, inquiries since we showed the spoon. So we wanted to keep the taste tintillated and show you what he does have on his shop as he fixes the glitch and things that um, like actually give a little more detail Nick you'd actually get on the shop we want to talk with him a little bit about what has made him decide to carve spoons and you know how maybe a little bit of the process not detail but just enough for you to see that there's a lot involved in it and it is an art it's not just carving wood whittling um, spoon carving is actually quite the art form so here we go Um, let's see, wood carving, spoon carving. Some people would say, wow, that's an interesting thing to pick to make a living from. But it's not just really spoon carving that you're focused on, it's carving in general, but this is one area where you felt was something that was in demand, something you enjoyed doing, um, something that you could be artistic at at the same time, um, that everybody needs, our spoons, yeah. right? <laughs> Everybody needs a spoon. Okay. So let's show them some of the styles. So and there's then, the straight handled ladle. Let me get out. This is, hang on, it's kind of a reflective there. Okay. So you can see um, the contour of the bowl and you can see where he's chiseled in there and on the outside. Now, usually when you go to a store and you buy a wood spoon, it's nice and smooth and you can tell that it's been, you know, mass manufactured. Um, will you sand this or do you leave them like that? I will not sand this. Now why is that? Well one, I really like the, uh, I don't know if you can really see it on the video, but the knife cuts, the different facets. Mm, let's see, let's move you over here a little bit. Let me see, let me see this. The light's just right to be funky. So okay, yeah. Maybe you got a cherry spoon I can look at and see that yeah, cherry these spoon. These are actually sanded on the outside. These were some of the first ones. Okay, so the first spoons that I thought you were working on these. The first spoons that you did were sanded on the outside and then you went into You can see still see the chisel marks on the inside of the bowl. That is not getting All right, we may just have to use the footage that we got. Okay. So now um, Where were we? Oh, well, See, it dips down. Put it back over here on the, and just use your finger. It'll help. You can see where it, it dips down, mm -hmm. and that's following the grain. Okay. So that's, that's why it's like that, and not just So the grain, you're straight. saying that the grain dictates to you what you've got going on in the shape. Yes, I can impose a design upon the wood, but the grain dictates how far I can take that. So what about like this this cherry spoon with its unique handle swooping down? Was that because that's how the grain worked? Or is that what you... A uh, little of both. The grain did curve around and so I went with it but I also uh, kept it straight here. Mm -hmm. and what about like this one? This one's that, very unique. Yep, yeah, that was the grain. So, the grain. so that's the way the, the piece was when I when I split it apart. And I just went with the, the, um, the shape of the kind of gave you a shaped uh, upward tilting handle. So even though, like, you can determine, obviously, for example, you can determine the size <coughs> of your bowl on your spoon or, mm -hmm. um, what do you want to call that? Like, if that's a scooper type bowl. spoon. Um, you cannot necessarily determine, you're not, it's not, it's not a mass production. Right. Each one's going to be unique. Even if I do the same design, each one is going to be a little different. Okay. And this right here, this is what you, it starts off looking like. I'm trying to, uh, that's the, I'll say the standard cooking spoon. Mm -hmm. uh, straight. And I'm trying to 
more ladle this one. Okay. We'll see how it turns out. So, but uh, you take a chunk of wood. I didn't intend and... to do that with this. It just something that I decided to do. Mm -hmm. Um, your big ladle down there. Ah, uh, I'm still working on this one. What is that kind of? What is that? That's cherry. Okay, so you, and then this and white so, stuff, this white, this white wood is not pine. What some people might mistake for pine, but it's maple. So it's a nice correct. hard wood that you're working uh, with for spoons. Um, I see a lot of your design has more of a primitive look, more of a primitive style. Yeah, you know, something you might see when you look back in pictures versus you know just a kind of a scoop. Yeah, uh, the deep, deep bowl ladle there so what got you into it um spoon carving i've wanted to try wood carving for a while uh, like so recently or when you were younger when i was younger some of the 17th century style carving but that's a lot to do, and it, it does require a lot of tools. Uh, and time. And time. And not... Um, a lot of... Probably not a high market area. Pre-learning. And the spoons... Go ahead, you can show them. Uh, Let's just show them. And these are, these are some spoons that he's currently working on. Ladle. You know, her... For wood carving, a lot of different sizes of chisels, different uh, um, types. And I only needed a few tools to do spoon. Just a hatchet, mm -hmm. just a camp hatchet. And I'm using a bent gouge, I think a number 20. Mm -hmm. um, it works. Oh, I want to get a hook knife or a crooked knife. That means a lot to us that have absolutely no idea what you do with carving. <laughs> well, it would be curved up more, mm -hmm. and the edges, like a knife, would be sharp, so you can scoop. Okay. This way. Some of them you can hold like this, scoop this way, mm -hmm. or back, which might give me a better finish. Make a little easier carving, and then just um, a knife. Now, you have to understand RJ, and he's got just minimal tools here. What, what you need to know is RJ has a litany of tools for this type of stuff that he's been collecting longer than I can remember. But, um, I forgot what are these called, chisels. <laughs> you know, chisels are or endless, what other kind of tools do you have? You have your... For general woodworking? Yeah. The planes and draw knife and other chisels, uh, saws, other... What's the, what's the circular thingy? The lathe. <laughs> other Thingies. things. But so what it, it's, it's kind of, I'm liking it. Um, here, let's turn this over to me for a minute. What? I like so much about what he's found himself um, wanting to pursue at this point in his life is the fact of the minimal tools that it takes and having our own Etsy shop that requires we have to have the generator um, we have to have certain you know we have to have chop saws and we have to have sanders and all these things that even though we have our own store and we're technically independent from um, the grid and stuff we still aren't and that to me that's it's got a a scary overlay there for me at times when I think about it so when he's doing this and he's using these tools and they require no generator and no gasoline and he could go out and he can you know um, create these things by hand with just a couple tools that encourages me that excites me it makes me you know think that that's in our life and the things we do, that's an important route for him to go as, as such a young man. Now. I do have all my fingers. <laughs> um, do you have any, any 
people that you look to that are good at woodworking um, that have helped you you know guided you whether it's through YouTube or whether it's DVDs or sh you know whatever like like Roy Underhill you know he's he is the man for Saint for Roy Saint Roy <laughs> but are there is there anyone else that you know you've you've found that you that you've got a couple websites you like to go to that they're focused totally in, in spoon carving and stuff yep uh, the one is Alex Yerkes who does Scandinavian style wooden cups uh, spoons. Peter Follinsby, he does the, uh, I think it's 17th century wood carving, spoons, bowls, a uh, whole lot of stuff. That's the DVD I got, uh, Peter Follinsby, spoon carving. And have you, so they, you've learned some things through them and didn't just trial and error and hands on. Yep. Well, have you got like things you've read about that have been helpful? Yeah, and I can't remember. <laughs> Cut. Um, <laughs> reading through the some of the blogs, uh, looking at a lot of pictures, looking at different styles, what other people are doing, seeing what I like, what maybe I can do, what I want to try, uh, and just trying things. So is you know I mean, the average person can go into Walmart, um, go to Amazon, and and buy a spoon that you know is like dirt cheap and mass produced and they're happy with the product. Do you find, have you seen through these other people, have your research that there is a demand for handcrafted um, tools are like wanting this? to get back to, uh, not rustic, not primitive, uh, the handcrafted art, I guess. Well, There's you know, no, no character in the mass produced. Right. you got something that somebody made, you know they took the care and the time to make it as best as they could, not just stamped it out. Yeah, and I think there's also a big push, and I know there's a big push for sustainably harvested people to respect where the, the product comes from, if it's wood, to sustainably, har to sustainably harvest that product. And I know, like, um, just like in our Etsy store, you guys go out into the woods and you haul this stuff in. You're not taking machinery out there. Um, you're not you're not even taking you know things to pull the woods up. You guys the inventory up. You guys are carrying it back on your shoulders. Just so a chainsaw to cut it down. Less damage to to its environment. Um, and I think that's important that people not to everyone, but I think a lot of people are catching on how important it is. But for you know talking about your tools, um, simple tools, yes, but. Um, Inferior tools, no. And a few simple tools will last you a lifetime when taken care of. And as a cook, um, I've had a lot of wood spoons in my day. I, <laughs> I've gone through a lot of wood spoons. Had a, Some not as good as others. <laughs> and I'm, I, you know, I've bought my share of cheap spoons from the store. But because our, her our desire for history within our family, our heritage, um, runs deep within us you know I have what I use in my kitchen my tools I want them to last and I want them to be um, and it passed down possibly you know I want there to be memories connected with that and heirloom. so heirloom yes and so I everything the kids have ever made me which started with spoons years ago you know I have kept now in all fairness my handsome number one son has let me know that mama does not take very good care of her wood spoons I don't oil them as often as they should. I leave them in hot water far too long. And that really irks him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mama. And what all right. So, anything else you want to say? You're gonna get your, your Etsy shop glitch situated. Yep. I'll have and, that done in a day or two. And we can find you where on Etsy. Wildwood Wanderers. On Etsy.com.